Hey everybody, it's Tim again with another episode of Let's Build Something, and today we will indeed be building something. Uh, so this is a request that I had saved just because I knew I'd get around to it eventually, um, and hopefully, uh, and at this point, I didn't know if someone would solve it. it. looked like the moderator of the subreddit was making it in Python, but once we read the spec, you'll see that uh, this is actually like way easier to execute in JavaScript, which basically means we're the, the overall plan is I want this user to just be able to go to a web page or something. You know, I'll set it up on AWS in an S3 bucket, which we'll show in this video. And uh, pretty much, I just want them to. It's just it's just, it's a simple web tool. I'm not going to go so far to say this is a web application because it certainly doesn't fit it. We're actually this whole thing won't even have a database connected. Um, we're actually going to do something funny in terms of like keeping data and stuff like that. Uh, but there's no database. Um, it's just all front end, all done in the browser. You just load the page. It'll probably just be an index file and a JavaScript file, and that's it. That's as, it's as simple as it can get. But enough with the enough with the forethought. Let's just get into the details. So, what this guy needs is he's asking. This whole paragraph just asking about automation. So I use tables, usually four to six, four columns, six rows which he assigns different values, words, sentences, numbers, that he and then he randomly selects them by rolling a dice where the first dice roll corresponds with the first row of the first column and a two on the second die corresponds to the second row of the second column. So pretty much whatever roll you're on, that number is the one that is going to get picked, That's, which is probably why it's always uh, six, six rows. Yeah. So either way... Uh, and he's looking for help to pretty much randomize a selection, make it better, uh, you know, be able to save tables, reload tables, automate the picking, uh, just, you know, a whole lot of stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a little notepad file, and we're going to just draw out some objectives, actually. Uh, you know what might be better is, here, let's just get started. We'll just make a folder, and we're just going to call this... Uh, Let's see, rename it, we'll call it a dice roller, and let's open that up, and let's open up a little terminal, and let's open up Atom, just get that popping off out here, alright, so there we go, we got Atom, alright, so uh, what we're going to do is here, we'll do uh, a file, and we're just going to call it spec.txt, and we're just going to go objectives. So we need to, let's see, uh, let's go back to that. So we need something that can help with the randomizing and selection process, uh, comparing the results, reporting the assigned values. So basically what he needs is a table that can be, that'll be default and uh, four by six by four because you put them in the weird order, um, default six by four, but uh, it'll have randomized picking, it'll have, uh, you can uh, save the values that were picked, you should be able to clear the table, the table should also be able to be any number of columns by any number of rows, any number of rows by any number of columns, so it should have a variable table if we want a 10 by 10, you know, whatever, um, and he wants to be able to create tables of different characteristics, uh, save whatever the characteristics are so we can reload them in the future, randomly select some of the values and show those values in a clear way. I uh, actually haven't even gotten started on this one. We're just going to just gonna do this one off the cuff. So either way, um, and then I'm actually I know I'm going to deploy it to S3 just because it's going to be easier. I have a website and a server and stuff like that, but once I show you what you can do with S3, um, it costs barely any money, and it's going to be probably one guy. I can't imagine he has 10,000 friends, so I don't think this is going to cost me really any money at all on AWS. Um, so let's just minimize this. So we know we need to uh, be able to show, um, to create and update a table of n by, and let's do n by n. Um, rows, columns, um, should be able to input into all cells. Uh, we should be able to uh, 
clear the table. Uh, automated automate um, selection and save selection. Be able to save and reload uh, filled tables. Um, so let's see, be able to create and update a table of n by n rows, should be able to input into all cells, should be able to clear the table, automate the selection and save the selection, uh, be able to save and reload filled tables. So that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, let's just get a, uh, let's just dive right into it. So um, what I'm going to use, because I, I want to do this quickly and I don't really care uh, about writing all this code, uh, like you know, I like you know, I don't, I'm not going to be painstakingly writing HTML. Uh, I'm going to do this the easy way, um, and the easiest way is to use a uh, pre-compiled uh, CSS framework that is just you know you can throw in some classes and things just start looking pretty right from the get-go. Um, if if you are a uh, you know a designer, uh, then by all means you know code your own uh, CSS classes like I totally encourage it but what we're gonna be using today is gonna be bootstrap um, very popular framework super easy to use this is actually how easy it is so I just went to bootstrap I went to getting started and uh, so this is what you need to get all the CSS in bootstrap you just copy and paste that link now there are some elements in bootstrap that require JavaScript and they use jQuery slim build. So today we're actually going to be working with jQuery also, uh, which is a JavaScript library. As of pretty much ES5, really ES6, there's really no need to use JavaScript, uh, jQuery anymore, but so many things are built on it. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I totally encourage you to use uh, vanilla JS because it's just faster and also it teaches you the real intricacies of JavaScript but uh, you know if you are new uh, jQuery really makes things simple I actually learned JavaScript first with jQuery I don't recommend doing that because you can pick up some bad habits that are really hard to break um, either way uh, you can see what I did is I just copied and it's gonna uh, get jQuery and then we have CDN to popper.min.js and then bootstrap min.js. Popper.min.js, uh, we're not even going to use it, so we could probably uninclude it, but I don't want to be causing any errors uh, on the front end. So let's just, you know, we'll just include it. And then we know we're going to have a script uh, here that is going to be our actual uh, our actual JavaScript that does all the lift, the heavy lifting that you know, does the fulfills the specifications, and we're just going to call that file main.js. And if we wanted to get started, we could just go main.js, just so we have it, and uh, that'll pretty much do it. So you know, if we go to index.html, you'll see we just have a blank HTML. So the thing with Bootstrap is layout becomes super easy. You can put things in containers. So there's containers, rows, and columns and they work exactly the way you think. It works in a grid pattern. It's much like an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, if you've ever had to have the displeasure of formatting an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, yeah, but either way, this pretty much operates in the same way. All the tags are the same. It's just the classes you're applying. So uh, I know some elements that I like to use. Um, we know we're gonna use a table, because we have to. And uh, I'm gonna use an element called a card which essentially just wraps a div element in a fancy container that can be stylized and has like a drop shadow and it, it looks nice. It's very uh, current web design. I'm sure it'll eventually fade out of fashion. But anyway, to get started, we're gonna do we're gonna create a div with a class of container. So this is gonna be our our big parent element, and then we're gonna create a div. Let's do let's do this div with a class of row. And uh, they always get stuck towards the top, and I don't like having my stuff uh, right on the top of the page. So I'm gonna do a margin top of 10%. Um, I'm gonna tell you right now, we are not gonna be worried about mobile first on this. Uh, this is gonna be a purely desktop application. We're not gonna handle mobile uh, kind of styling. Um, Bootstrap is great, and actually Bootstrap is for mobile first styling, but we're just trying to make something quick. I mean, this is just a simple, real simple web tool. Really doesn't need to be anything more than that. 
Um, and this guy, I'm sure, would be just happy to have it. So uh, we're not going to go crazy with the styling because we could be here all day. Uh, especially designing for multiple devices. You know, there's a device for everything. You can pretty much run a web page on a rock nowadays. So we're not going to... Um, we're not even going to get get into that, and also like don't even get me started on the galaxy folding thing. That's going to be an absolute nightmare to make things for. So the first thing we're going to do is uh we're going to make a another div. This is just going to be a card. It's going to be like an info card, pretty much uh, telling you what the site does, because you know that'd be nice. Um, and it's gonna we're going to make it two. So there's twelve columns available in a row, and two of them we're going to give to this card, and you'll see what that looks like. So we're going to div class card. Um, we're going to set the style of it. We're going to do width of 18 rem, which is uh, not for sleeping. And then we're going to do div class card body. And uh, we're going to do an h5 element as a class of card title. And we're just going to call this a word matrix because it is a matrix stuff technically. Uh, dice roller. And then close up this card, make it look a little nicer. Um, and then we're just going to have a paragraph element in here. Uh, and the class is going to be card text and if you were wondering where I am just coming up with these I'm not making these up if you go to components and you go to card you'll actually see like this is kind of what we're going for we're actually looking something for more like uh, some more like this this is what we're looking for pretty much this exactly actually you could probably just copy this yeah actually I highly recommend that just go to the page copy this and then just paste it where the card's supposed to go and that'll be easier and what we're going to do is we're just going to have um, some content goes here. And then we're going to close that. We're going to go back to dice roller. And look at that. We've got a little box floating right here. That's it. That's pretty much all that's going to do. Um, we're actually going to add uh, some but a button at least. I mean, we're going to probably need more buttons, but uh, let's just add a button. Um, I guess it can be type of button. Really, this isn't really important, and neither is a name. Um, we're going to space things out. Margin top. Well, let's just do a total margin of uh, 10 pixels. We see how these things look like. Um, but there are classes that Bootstrap comes with, and you just do button, button, primary. And uh, pretty much that's... That's pretty much it for making a button. Um, you need to put some text in here, and here we'll have the first one. We'll do uh, maybe export table, I guess, or yeah, because let's let's focus on making exporting tables and reading them back in. Let's focus on that first because that's probably going to be a huge pain. Um, so let's do export table. So we'll have that, and then we're going to have uh, actually a file upload which HTML5 uh, does this in a really kind of nice way. Um, the bad thing is, is you can't really style, okay, that's a lie. You can style file uploads, but what you do is you wind up just making a ghost element that kind of takes their place. And here we'll just do a label for nothing. We don't really need that. And we'll just do upload a table, okay? And then we gotta actually add the file input, which you just, it's an input field, but the type is file and we're gonna give that a name uh, or an ID actually and let's just call it a file input pretty vague name but whatever and we're gonna actually give it accept text plain there we go and that should be pretty much it that's our whole card so let's see what our card looks like export table upload table that's pretty much all we need so what are we missing probably something that can go onto the right here which is going to be a table and that actually is going to be really simple because we're actually going to use JavaScript to make the contents of the table so that we don't ever have to worry about uh, doing that so we want to add some space between these two elements so if you do offset medium to that's what MD stands for and then do col column MD 8 8 plus 2 
plus 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. 12 elements. We'll have a full row, uh, so things should look nice. And uh, we're going to add actually another card here just because I'm a sucker for cards. Uh, and we're going to probably pad that as well. Uh, let's just do padding. And let's just pass in some 10 pixels. Uh, and we'll do a width of 100 pixels. I'm doing inline styles right now just because I am a, uh, I am a heathen. Um, I do not recommend them. Uh, always, you know, make a style sheet, use a style sheet, but we're trying to keep this super simple. And like, honestly, you know, CSS, like get out of here. Okay. So, um, word, this is the, this is the table, by the way, we're going to call this word, I guess, dash matrix. Um, and the class, again, another bootstrap item table, table bordered, which just makes a, uh, a really nice, really nice table and inside of a table you have a T body and we're gonna add a T row and we'll do some TDs just to show you what these things look like and here we'll have a two rows with however many elements I just put and let's see what it looks like oh that's an absolute mess uh, that is not the way that was supposed to look at all let's see uh, so let's see where did we go wrong uh, let's see, we got offset medium too. Do we spell it right? Probably not. Uh, oh, MS. MD. MS is not a size. It is MD. There you go. Look at that. Now we've got a table that fits. The height is going to be dynamic, so it really doesn't matter what a type looks like, but it looks like we got a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we got a two by five uh, matrix going on here. Um, and really, what we want to do is probably have some input fields down here where you can just type in rows, a number for rows, columns, and then just like make that table. Uh, so here's what we'll do. The first thing is let's just open up the JavaScript file and let's just, you know, get started with making a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this, this whole code, this line right here that I just wrote is equivalent to document.ready uh, in jQuery like this whole function where you do something in that that there that's pretty much the equivalent uh, I I know what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to do make table so let's just uh, let's get a function here and we're gonna call it make table and we can give it rows columns which I believe is what he originally asked for right it's four four columns six rows so it's actually six by four because uh, we want to do because I like to do rows by columns. And so now that we have a function defined in here, we have to define it outside of the scope. So I'm going to do make table and I'm going to give it rows columns. And so what we're going to do is uh, we have rows and columns. And you know what? We're going to be making and destroying tables a lot because the same table really, but we're going to be truncating the entire table and then repopulating it. So while we're here, let's make a function that's called clear table and it'll it doesn't need anything um, but what we can do is get this element this ID get to the T body get all the children if there's any inside of there and just remove them uh, so the way that we can do that is let's just make a variable uh, and we're just gonna call it matrix uh, why is there a dollar sign in front I like to put dollar signs because it usually means it's a jQuery like Dom element um, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. You can style it however you want. That just helps me. It's just a habit that I have. And with jQuery, instead of doing document dot get element by ID, you can actually just do this dollar sign parenthesis. And if you specify a hashtag, it's an ID. A dot is a class uh, before whatever you're looking for. And this will just give you that. Uh, don't need semicolons because that's kind of uh, you know, not necessary. I mean, you can have them if you want. Depends how you want to write your JavaScript. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to write wipe the entire table, rows, and columns. And probably the easiest way to do that is just do matrix find, and we want to find the T body, and then we want to get all of its children, and then we want to do what is a map. And so the first element, when looping over a DOM, is the index, and the second element is the actual thing you're looking for so we have an underscore which usually means that you know 
whatever is there is not going to be used. And we're going to do an arrow function actually, a little bit of ES6 in here. And we're just going to do element, because this actually gives you the DOM element. It doesn't give you a jQuery DOM element. You need a jQuery instance uh, right here to do jQuery operations. And the one we're going to do is called remove. So clear table, that should be pretty much all we need. Uh, we can test to see if this works. But uh, what we're going to do is the first thing we want to do when you call this is we want a clear table. So actually, you know what? We have two rows, six, uh, six columns. And what should happen is when we run this script, it should just clear the table. So when we reload the page, there, even though there was a table, it should be gone. And look at that. It's a totally empty table, just an empty card, really. But it's definitely an empty table. All right. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to need this element a lot. Uh, so uh, we're going to do var table body, and that's going to be equal to uh, matrix dot find pretty much this actually this line right here. Okay, and uh, we want to actually get the element there. So uh, we'll well we might not need to we'll see. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make we're going to actually construct the table HTML out of a JavaScript string, and we're just going to set the interior of table body to the uh, to the uh, the string that we make. And uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have table HTML. It's going to be equal to an empty string at first because you know uh, we, there's nothing to put in. What we're going to do is two for loops though nested for loops. So for var and we're going to have row count which is going to be equal to zero at first and then why this will iterate while row count is less than rows and then row count uh, plus plus so we're going to increment it at the uh, end of the loop and then what we'll do is the first thing we need to do when we start uh, a loop because start a new row is we need to make an element so you do plus equals and then you would do a uh, table row. You would open up that tag. And then you're actually going to do another for loop. And this will be for the columns. And we're just going to call this uh, column count. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, in here, instead of doing this, this is going to be a uh, table data element. So we're going to open that and close that tag. And then, last but not least, outside of the nested for loop, we close our row. And now, table HTML should be a string containing however many rows and columns we specified of TRs, TDs that are closed. And this is all, you know, proper working HTML. And what we want to do is we want to do table body. We want to grab that element. Inner HTML is equal to table HTML. So what happens now? is let's delete this we should get a six by four matrix from make table so let's see one two three four five six one two three four five six that's odd one two three four five yeah it's what is it, six by six that's kind of odd uh oh that's why you gotta be careful when you copy and paste code. Uh, this ran for as many rows as there were, not columns, so it wound up making a uh, square matrix. Um, but anyway, let's do it. Okay, now we have one, six by four. This is what we need. There is kind of an issue though. Uh, we can't type in these fields, and that's kind of annoying because, like, how else are we gonna do that? So maybe your first thought is let's just put an input inside of each table data element. You can. There's actually something even easier and we're always going to take that easy route um, there is a element there is a attribute you can put on pretty much any HTML5 tag that's I mean that's not really the case but you can do it for divs paragraphs uh, pretty much anything that has text in it um, besides anchors I believe um, you just do content editable and it pretty much makes it an input field um, it just puts raw text into those tags um, obviously, that implies a, a lot of things, um, so don't use this liberally. Uh, we're only using this because it's really this is not connected to any back end, nothing. And you'll see, we can now type. The rows get uh, dynamically, you know, they get dynamically put, uh, like adjusted for 
width um, really doesn't matter uh, I think we'll be okay with that uh, yeah so that's pretty much it for making a table and clearing a table actually you know what this make table function because it clears a table this is actually let's just generalize this function and run it off of some uh, some do some variables that basically we just set and that or you or pass in you can have it to where your variables be passed in uh, I'm gonna do this because this I think will be easier for me to just modify stuff but uh, let's do window so this is what we're gonna attach this to the window object in the browser um, row dim is gonna be equal to six and window column dim is equal to four obviously you don't want to attach anything that's like super super special to your window especially if there's any kind of keys or anything like that but what this allows us to do is we can just call make table as an empty function and then we can do var rows is equal to window because windows accessible from uh, anywhere in the code so again uh, you would want to use attaching stuff to the window object uh, very cautiously and you would really want to carefully understand the implications of doing so uh, if you were to take that route so um, what we should be able to do now is okay yeah we're making a file and if we were to change this to 8 and reload we've now got 8 columns instead of 6 so this works pretty damn well um, yeah cool so that was cool uh, the next thing that we should probably focus on is is probably exporting the table maybe no you know what let's focus on adding uh, input elements to dynamically change this on the fly just you type in some numbers and just it just does that let's let's handle that uh, the easiest way to attack that is first let's uh, well you know let's create the elements so the easiest way to do that is inside the card element we want to probably have a div yeah let's do a div row and I'm trying to think of the best way to go about doing this or style this. let's do div class of just a column just a regular column no size is needed uh, and we're actually gonna have two of these and we'll just have a row with two columns that take up the entire width of the table and we're gonna have a label and this is gonna be uh, rows and then we'll have another label and this will be called columns columns and then inside here is going to be an input uh, we can do the type of text you could put number um, the value is gonna uh, the value really really we're not going to even assign it a value we're just going to give it a placeholder and we're just going to put uh, rows and then for this we'll just put columns and then what I'm going to do is instead of assigning these two separate IDs I'm just going to give them a data attribute so we're going to do data table dim Tim that's me uh, dim and then what we're gonna do is this guy will be rows or row let's just do row and this will be column so what happens is we can attach a handler to every element that just has this data attribute and then read in the value and if it's a row or a column or whatever we just we just act we just uh, you know modify it based on then and actually let's uh, let's handle that so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a function that's gonna attach when the, when this page loads it's gonna attach this uh, on change function to both input fields that we just specified so we're gonna call this uh, handle dimension change and it doesn't need anything but we do need a function handle dimension change again you don't have to write everything in the same file it's just you know it's just me uh, like a little space after that okay uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get jQuery we're gonna use brackets to try and reach a data to write, try and reach a attribute of an HTML element so this is gonna grab every HTML element that has data table dim as an attribute and what we want to do is we want to change we want to attach a listener uh, called change and E is going to be the event so this will be able to give us the actual element that was changed 
So, and you'll see how that plays in. We're going to do an arrow function again. And in here, we're going to do var dimension. And that's going to be equal to e.target, which e.target gives us uh, the DOM element. And then this gives us the jQuery DOM element that we can then run operations on. And we'll do data table dim. So you don't have to write data dash table dim because you're already looking for data objects. jQuery handles that for you. Uh, so far value and the value is just going to be equal to uh, e dot target and because these are inputs you want to use dot val not dot text um, we are going to use dot text when we're trying to read these uh, anything that's in these TDs because these aren't inputs and therefore val this function isn't really appropriate to use right there um, and then we could do an if statement like if dimension is equal to row you know what I got a better idea so you there's two ways to access objects and the window is an object in JavaScript and there's two ways to access a key by dot notation or by bracket notation and as of ES6 you can actually do string templating so we're actually gonna do something a little crafty here we're gonna get the window object we're gonna use bracket notation and then for specifying the key Notice I am using the key right below the escape, uh, the one that this tilde is on. That allows you to do this in JavaScript. If you type a dollar sign, open, close, curly brace, you can put a variable into this, and it will get transformed into text. Uh, be careful if you're trying to pass some value that you think will be undefined, uh, because that will cause an absolute mayhem. Uh, you'll be wondering why you're getting errors, where you're getting them, and it's because you're trying to pass an undefined value. It's trying to turn into a string, um, and JavaScript will coerce it uh, into a string, but you don't know what the value is going to be, especially if the value is changing. Like, that's, uh, that's something that you kind of want to be careful with. So what we did is we just now, if you change the input, we find we change the window element of whatever row column whatever because all we do is we just put row or column right there and then we add the dim at the end we set that equal to our value it gets saved and now we just need to update our table and since we changed the window element already uh, let's just do make table and we'll call that handle dimensions change now it's done now you may be thinking uh like you know what does this mean well the script will load it will then go hit call handle dimensions change handle dimensions change will find every element with this data attribute attach a function on change that then will you know read the type read the type of data it is and assign it to its proper window variable which default six and four but whatever we type is what it's going to become after it's assigned we recreate the table and that func that handler does not get destroyed uh, it only gets attached on function load. It doesn't get reattached ever. It doesn't get destroyed. We're not creating new inputs, so we don't need to reattach handlers, like nothing like that. Um, so let's see what that looks like. I guess that's not horribly ugly. I'm not really sure if I like the style of that. Uh, oh, you know what? For Bootstrap, there is actually a class for that, because of course there is, because Bootstrap has a class for pretty much every basic HTML element, and I believe it's called form control. Uh, I don't know if you need to apply it to this. Let's just see what that looks like. Ah, okay. Yeah, I like that. So, right now we have a four by uh, a six by four. So let's do six by ten. Oh, look at that. So change only fires after you blur the input, and a blur is when you have a focused input like this where you're typing and you click off of it. Once you click off of it is when the change takes place. So 10 by 10, I just made the change. I'm about to click off of it, 10 by 10. And each one of these is editable, editable, not editable. And there you go. So there you go. Um, we could put the default values in here if we felt so inclined. I, I mean, I don't really care. Uh, I mean, we, we can do that. I mean, if, if, if we really want to. Uh, I'm not really that, I don't really care because this is just like specifying extra rows and extra columns. Hey, you know what? This code's going to be available for you. So if you want to make this thing look pretty, because this is going to be legitimately, this is about as fancy as it's going to get. So um, so if someone wants to go along and make a really cool UI for this, 
I, I completely applaud that effort and I really encourage it. I think that would be awesome. I'd love to see some UIs uh, that you guys come up with. Uh, all right. What is next? What do you even have to do? I don't even know what we have to do. Uh, okay, so spec. Be able to create and update a table of n by n rows. All right, well, let's just cross that boy out. So we should be able to input into all cells. Uh, we did that already. We should be able to clear the table. Killed it. Uh, automate selection and save selection. Haven't gotten to that. Be able to save and reload field tables. So these two were kind of the money makers. Uh, so let's start with the saving and reloading tables. Um, the best way is probably just to get started with an export. And I'm thinking some kind of CSV format. Basically, we're going to pretty much create a format. Uh, and it's going to be comma-separated values where each line, each end of a row, a row is end is uh, ends with a semicolon. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, it's not exactly CSV. It's kind of like our own little format. But uh, I think that that might be the best way to do it. So what we can do is, if this is the export table, the first thing we need to do is we need to add an on-click function, uh, which is going to call a function that's loaded. And we're just going to call it export uh, table. And it doesn't need to take anything. There's no parameters. There's no nothing like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's that. OK, we just got to make the function now. So let's do, uh, where should we put it? Clear table. Here, we'll do export table. Function export table. It doesn't take anything. Uh, I can tell you right now, we're going to need these guys, that's for sure. Um, so let's see, how would we go about doing that? We're going to export this table. So we need to iterate over every single cell, essentially, and save it. So the first thing we probably need to do is we need to probably figure out if the table is even valid. Because if someone has an empty table, that's going to kind of just, you know, rain on our parade. So let's get the row count. And we're going to need the... Uh, the column count. So the way to do this is let's do table body, which we need to put because we call the zero here. Um, let's do table body. Uh, we're going to find uh, all of the table rows that exist. And if the length of that is greater than zero, we're going to do a ternary function, then just give me this, then give me this value. Otherwise, give me zero. And for this, pretty much going to do a similar operation for columns, but we're going to actually do find the first table row because we know that there's not going to be like on the third row only four columns and on the second row six. You know, we're making rectangular, you know, uh, array, rectangular matrices. So what we can do is we can actually just find the first uh, TR which you could do first of type and then, uh, you know, call it bracket zero, just get the first element. Uh, you can do EQ zero and that also will uh, give you the, like a jQuery instance of the zeroth position. So it pretty much grabs the element and then puts it in dollar sign uh, parentheses again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find all the TDs that exist and we're going to get the length of that. Which again, if it's greater than zero, then give me that length. Otherwise, give me zero. And then we're going to run, well, we're going to need to also be making some export text. So let's just, you know, if any variable, but near here we need to run a validation where pretty much if row count or column count, uh, which pretty much we don't even actually just. If it's not zero, that's pretty much what we're saying here. If it's not zero, then uh, then we're gonna not run the interior of this if statement. But if they both, if either one of these are zero, then we have a problem, and so we need to do uh, nothing to export because the table's invalid. And then we're gonna just return false. There we go. Now, if we get past this return statement, we know that we have valid data in this table. So the first thing we're probably going to do is we're probably just going to loop over every row and every column 
yeah, every row and every column, which pretty much we're going to hit every cell in this table. Uh, there might be a more efficient way to do this, but I'm thinking if we just map, and again, we're mapping over a jQuery object, so uh, it's going to be the index, which I'm going to call row index, or R I D X, and then R E L, which is not relationship, it's row element. Uh, probably a bad variable name, but I know what it means. So uh, there we go. And you know, like I said, we're the only ones working on this project. So uh, row data is going to be an array that we're going to store. Pretty much any value, all the values we come across in every cell is going to get put in this array. And so here from here, we can go get that uh, and then do EQ and get the row that we're on and then do find TD. And this will give us all the TDs in the row that we're focused on. And again, we're going to map again, but we're going to do C, I, D, X, and column element. And then we're going to do another arrow function. This is pretty much a, a nested for loop, um, but we're mapping. It's I mean, the map in a for loop is pretty much for each element. That's pretty much what we're doing, for each element. Uh, what we'll have is we're going to get cell value it is going to be the column element dot text dot length if it is greater than zero then um, oh then get the uh, cell dot text and see right here we're using text not val because these are not inputs but if the input of this TD uh, is like empty if there's nothing in it then let's just give us back a space character because if we give back nothing at all when we try to parse this, it'll just be comma, 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 comma. And when we uh, when we try and read that, I can already tell you that that's going to be a problem. So we can do cell value. Um, also, we are using crap. We are using commas and semicolons. And I believe he said that he can have parentheses. I mean, not parentheses, sentences. So we're just going to do this because... Uh, you know, I don't want to try doing something even more insane than we're already doing, but um, I'm just going to replace all commas with a space. And I'm also going to replace all semicolons because we use those. Those are special characters for us. Uh, I'm going to replace those with a space too. So it won't look that funky when you read it, but those those, those characters will be missing. And then uh, we'll do row data and we're going to push uh, cell value. And that's pretty much it. And once we escape, uh, oh, actually, you know what? Hmm. We did the row data, so we went over the row, and we got, oh, you know what? Okay, so actually, this is where we write the first line of in export text, because if we try to write all of it at once, uh, we're not going to know where to put semicolons, because we won't know how wide or how uh, long table is you know like we're not going to try and do math on this and figure out oh, okay if there's you know uh, you know 10 elements and it's what well actually it could be a lot of combinations at 10 elements and you'd have to figure out which one we're not going to be playing that game uh, we're just going to do when we when we reach the end of a row which is coming out of this map function we're going to do export text we call it export text is that what we call it okay and we're going to do plus equals and we're going to do another string templating and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do row data, and I'm going to join the entire array on commas, and then add a semicolon to the end, because we know we reached the end of a row, and that should be it. And you know what? We're just going to run a debugger right here and just see what we get. And so here, let's just do... Just click around, and we'll leave some empty. And then we're going to do export table. Oh, it would help if I have the console open. Export table. So we should have export text. And you'll see. Look at that. We got our first row, because we got a semicolon. Our second row, semicolon. Third row, semicolon. Fourth row, fifth row. An empty, and then a totally empty sixth row. But you see there's spaces in there. If there wasn't, it would just be commas, you know, back to back to back. And then... A uh, semicolon and that would that would probably not go well when we try to parse that because if we were to do export text dot split and we were to do on comma 
and there were no spaces like here. I'm gonna split on comma, and you'll see space is what gets required. Space is what gets reported back to us. The problem is, is that if nothing was in there, we would wind up with no element at all right here, and then when you're looping through it, you wouldn't know where to put it because if there was an empty element in the front and the second element had a value, the first element is nothing, so it would be skipped. It would just get deleted out of the array. It wouldn't even be reported. So the second element would actually get pushed up uh, to the first column, which is not what we're trying to do here. Um, anyway, let's go back. Okay. Uh, what we need to do now is... So this is kind of tricky. Uh, we're going to force a download in the browser. And the easiest way to do that is, we're, first off, let's just break this into uh, a function. Um, and we're going to just send the text. And we're only working with text files. Uh, we're not trying to send JSON or anything like that. Uh, and we're just going to call this table export.txt. That's what we're going to be reading and writing, table exports. That's what we're doing. Um, so here we'll add, we'll go down here and we'll do a function download export and we're going to take a, uh, you know, some text and a file name because that's what we're looking at. And honestly, this is, this is how this is done. Uh, you do var element and then, uh, we're just going to do native JavaScript here. I'm not even going to try and do this with uh, jQuery because uh, I just... I, I, just, I just don't want to do it. It's actually more complicated to write in jQuery than it is to just write in vanilla JavaScript. So we're going to do document, uh, create element. We're going to create an anchor tag because anchor tags, if you know this, uh, have an attribute called download on them. And so we're going to do element set all right, the uh, set attribute href to, and this is where we're actually going to do a data. We're going to do a uh, uh, a URI string. So we're going to do text slash plain because that's all we're writing. Um, if this was a PDF, this would cause a problem because I know Chrome recently, I think as, Chrome, as far as Chrome 64, uh, stopped supporting data string PDFs uh, loaded from web pages. Uh, and you know what? I don't even know if this is going to work uh, online because this is still a data string and I don't even know if we can do data strings online whatever uh, anyway we're gonna do this and we're gonna do a comma and just do uh, plus encode URI component and this is where we send the text and then we're gonna do element set attribute download and file name there we go and we're going to actually make this element invisible. Um, so there's style.display equal none. I think that actually has to be a string. And then document.body.append child uh, element, because this is going to append the A element that we're making here. And then we're actually going to call click on it, and then document.body dot remove child element so what we do is we set up the a element append it to the body of the HTML page click it and then delete it all in one go and uh, we'll see how that works that should be that should be the money though um, let's see and we gotta type in here again And let's just see where do we get encode URL component. That's because it is encode URI component, not URL component. Oh, I can tell you what, this is going to get annoying to test. We better get this file stuff straightened out. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy. Let's open it up. And if you look at it, ASA21212, ASA21212, if we split this on each semicolon, you'll see we're pretty bang on with our inputs. Right positions, right locations, right everything. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to not save that. 
we're gonna go here and we're gonna show this in folder and we'll just have it right uh, let's just do it right there table export so and what I'm planning on doing is just now that we have some sample data we can just drag it in here and then when we do that when we execute that change it'll just automatically you know handle it we don't have to worry about making a table every single time we want to try this thing uh, another thing to know though is that if we have a table that's not a default 4 by 6 we have to actually make the table look like the data then import the data so uh, that's actually uh, not that complicated now that I think about it um, so let's think uh, we got all this we've got our document upload uh, okay you know what let's um let's handle that let's handle the document upload so uh, we need to attach a listener to the document uh, upload so handle file upload and where's that other handle function right here so function handle file upload and again this is one of those things that's a little bit easier to write in uh, well it's actually not it's actually not easier to write in uh, vanilla JS so here we'll do this I'm just gonna make a variable called content array and uh, it is going to be equal to file contents because we need to get the contents how are we going to get them no this won't work you know what okay this will be easier to write in regular JavaScript so what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable called file input and it's going to be equal to the document uh, get element by ID and we're just going to get file input which again in the HTML is the name of our input uh, and then we're going to do file input uh, add event listener which is what you know we do with that dot change earlier wherever that is that change it's, it's an event listener that's what they're called and this is how you do it in regular JavaScript and the event we're looking for is change and on that we're going to run a function with e uh, and what we're going to do is var file is going to be equal to and here we're actually going to I'm, I, you can mix the two up uh, it's probably not good practice to do that but it's just easier for me to write right now so I'm going to get go grab the jQuery element and just grab the actual element itself you could do document get element by ID again or you could just do uh, Actually, you could probably just do file input zero. That would probably, that would probably work. Um, file file input, yeah. And you just do files. Just get uh, what you can call on inputs of that type. And then we're going to do text type, which this is going to say uh, pretty much what we're looking for uh, UR, URI strings that are of text something that's it we just need text something they need to be they need to have text in them they're just because that's all we're reading is just simple text files and so if file type no file type matches this regex spring regex string which is what these slashes denote um text type then we're going to create a variable called reader it's going to be equal to a uh, native browser object called file reader and hopefully their browser supports this I'm sure older versions don't uh, on load goal function e uh, let's just do a debugger in here because I don't even know what we're gonna get uh, and then we'll just do a, a reader read as text and we'll do file and if everything just hits the fan then we'll just do file not supported which basically means if the file type they try to upload as a PDF or some other some other thing um, then that is what's gonna call that 
So let's minimize this. Uh, let's go back to here. Okay, cool. So what did we get? So we got an object E. It's called a progress event. Uh, probably just do reader, actually. Probably just call that. Oh, reader dot result. Oh, well, this is why. So this is a function that is called uh, not when it is instantiated, but after the file is read. Um, it's asynchronous. So actually, what we need to do is uh, actually just do. Let's just throw this string that we're going to get because we know we're reading text. Reader dot result. Let's just do that. And I just made up a function called populate table. Uh, we'll put it right here, uh, and we're going to take a text string. Uh, actually, you know what? This is what we'll call the file content, because that's what it is. This is actually the contents of the file. So we're going to have var content array. A -R -R -A -Y. And the thing is, is that let's just say that Chrome blocks us from doing data strings. I just had a thought. This is literally an index.html page. If we just zip up this folder and send it to him, he can open it anywhere on any computer that has a, a browser installed on it and be able to run this. So this actually isn't a problem at all. Um, so if it doesn't work online on S3, then, uh, then yeah, you know, we'll just say, hey, it's a local solution. I mean, because he was looking at doing a Python solution. So... Okay, so what I did is we're going to read in a string, file contents. We're going to split on every semicolon. And uh, let's just see what that gets us because we still don't know what this exactly looks like. Um, oh, go away. Okay, so you can see if we go to content array. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven elements. Oh, well, you see the seven right there. Oh, you know why? We split on the last semicolon, and it leaves a kind of trailing uh, comma. So what we can do is just do content array dot pop, and then if we call content array, it's six. So pop will pop the last element off of the array. If you set this equal to a variable, you'll get the last element, but we just want to get rid of it because it's meaningless to us. Um, dot shift uh, moves the first, it gets pops the first element off of the array. So if you weren't familiar with array functions in JavaScript, those are two that are pretty ubiquitous. Um, so we're going to do content array and get rid of that last useless element. And then what we need to do is uh, just do, we need to get the imported files dimensions. Yeah, because uh, if we don't know them, that's going to be a problem. So window.row count or row dim actually because that's the name of our window is going to be equal to the content arrays now since we popped off this useless one uh, dot length and window dot column dim is going to be equal to content array just grab the first element split because it's a string on every comma and then just give us the length of that and then what we can do is we can just call make table because we just set these two variables again, we call make table. Make table will reference them and uh, reference them internally. And then that's it. That's pretty much it. And now we need to populate our table. So here we go again. I, we, this should really, this is a sign that I, when I'm reusing these variables, that that should be abstracted. Um, yeah. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do content array. And we're going to map over an array this time. So the way it would actually work is it would be the rows data and then the row index. So it's opposite uh, of looping over a jQuery element. And there we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go over row data, which is a string. Again, we never officially split it into a variable. We're going to split on every comma, which is going to give us, you know, n many elements, which is going to be however many columns this thing is and we're going to map and we're going to call this uh, we can call this just the value because this is just going to be the value of a single cell in, in the table at location r idx uh, c idx 
and again da, da, and here is where we're gonna fill in the fill in the uh, the table so what we're gonna do is we need to find table row get all the table rows get the one that we're focused on then we need to find all the TDs and then again focus on this time the specific column we're worried about and then we call dot text but instead of this time reading we want to write so we're gonna put value inside of there and I think that should be it and you know what the easiest way to check is by looking so we know what this data looks like uh, you know we've got a couple numbers out there and you know what let's just uh, let's add a value in here all right and look at that we got it in and it freaking is perfect and we delete some values you know we can export a new table we got a new table export all right we're gonna replace the file and destination we'll refresh the page drag a new one in like that drag a new one in like that like I mean it should it's sh let's see if uh, it just overwrites I think it did I can't tell Uh, no, it didn't. So this, once you upload a file, you do need to refresh it. Uh, that's something that we can overcome. Uh, we'll see what we'll see where we're at with time. But either way, we've got an export and we've got an import. So now we can export and import files. So let's uh, here let's just make a robust file. So we'll do a one. Actually, you know what? Let's just do a. Uh, a six by six and I'll just put random data probably just numerical data it's easier for me to type yeah and so <laughs> I don't know what this data might represent but there we go so we got six by six I'm gonna export that table and now we have a actual export uh, and if we refresh it if we import this table You'll see we went from 6x4 to 6x6, and actually I forgot to save the last number. And here, let's refresh. Import table. Yeah, okay, now we're good. Okay, perfect. Um, what is next? What the heck is next? Uh, spec. So we've got able to save and create tables. Cool. Save that. Cha-ching. Uh, automate the selection and save the selection. That's probably going to be, the, honestly, the easiest thing to do. Um, we need some buttons because we have nothing that goes with that. So you know what? Let's add a button. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a type or a name or nothing. But it does probably need a class. I'm trying to think. Should we make these? Uh, you know what we can do? This will be make random selection. And then what I'm thinking is we can have clear selection and then we can have export selection because we want to also be able to save these things. Um, let's add these guys. Let's give them some style. And let's just do the uh, same thing as the other buttons, margin, 10 picks. And uh, also we want to give them classes because they want them, want them to look nice. And these are going to be button and then button something. Um, this guy can be a primary. This guy can be a secondary. And this guy can be a light. I'm not making up these, by the way, these primary, secondary uh, things. If you go to Bootstrap, once again, more classes. Uh, go to Components buttons primary secondary success danger warning info light dark link once you start using bootstrap you're gonna realize how just everywhere these things are look at that actually that that's kind of cool some outline buttons Ooh, that's kind of that's kind of hot um, let's do button outline secondary for the last one
Let's see what that looks like. Cool. I like that. Um, I don't like how it's just like a row on row on row of buttons. Let's, let's break this thing up. Um, just add a horizontal rule, honestly. It kind of made all the difference, to be completely honest. Uh, it's just e easier to see. You know, you got make random selection, clear selection, export selection. None of these buttons do anything right now. Um, but they will. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is by specifying an on click function. So the first one is probably um, random select. We haven't made this function yet. We're going to make it right now. Uh, all this stuff can go at the bottom because this is all now having to do with uh, selections. I'm trying to think where to start. Let's just do full. Let's first name the function, I guess. Uh, random select. We don't need to take anything. Um, we're going to need to reset selection. How are we even going to determine who's selected or who's not? Uh, let's do a class. That's probably the easiest way. So here we'll do a style tag. I set a style tag. Um, and we'll just do any table data that have the class of selected, uh, not like the attribute or anything like that. Um, we're going to give them a background color of, I don't know, let's just do, um, just do red for right now. And we'll, uh, we'll change it to something better later. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I, I know the color is green hex is code. 8, 3, DA, 8? It's 8 or 6, I feel. Okay, whatever. Anyway, we have a class now. Um, and it's going to color it some kind of color in the background. That's the only way we'll know. Um, so what we can do is, again, we're going to need to cannibalize some code from somewhere else. Um, and then we're going to do for var selected row equals zero because we're going to go through every element again. Selected row is less than window dot row dim, uh, and then selected row plus plus, and then we can have selected column. is going to be equal to get random selection, which uh, if you remember the specs, basically for every row, we're going to just select some random one of these guys. Every row, we're selecting a random column, and that one's going to get highlighted. We do that for every single row. That's why I'm looping over every single row and then picking a random column, uh, which get random selection. So I guess let's just do... Uh, function get random selection uh, pass it the value which is however many columns we're supposed to be having um, and the easiest way to do this is actually just return math this is a very like you'll write this function so many times if you have to do anything that has to do with randoms which it seems like everybody wants something to do with randoms um, so what this does is uh, this obviously floors a value. Math.random will only give you a random value between 0 and 1. So what you do is you multiply it by your max, and then you just floor that value, and then that is the number that you will get. Uh, so we're going to get a whole, a whole number here, anywhere from 0 to max. That's pretty much what we're going to get. Uh, so we'll get whole int from 0 to max. There you go. And then what we need to do is we need to highlight that guy. So let's do a table body dot find tr and do eq selected row because that's what we're on. And then do find td dot eq selected column. And then we're going to just do dot add class selected and yeah look at that oh okay well if we click it enough times we know that this okay there we go <laughs> we uh, and we can't clear selection each time we click it we need to clear the entire table so let's uh, let's write a function 
reset selection doesn't need anything um, and we'll just do any TD elements with the class of selected uh, we're just gonna do map and we get a useless object and then the actual element we give a shit about uh, and then we'll do element remove class selected so what we do is we actually get a selector that selects any table data with the class of selected and then remove the class <laughs> so uh, and then yeah that's pretty much it and what we want to do probably at the top of random select is just called reset selection so there we go and now we don't and you notice we never get two in the same row they're always different and it resets them each time and obviously if you have a 100 by oh shit I should not have done that 100 um, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's a little extreme of an example. Um, but anyway, it does work though. Uh, and actually, funny enough, we just wrote, out of necessity, uh, an on click function. So on click, random select, no, re reset selection. That's what we needed, not random select. I need reset selection. So now you don't even have to run another selection. You can select and then just clear, select, clear, or select, 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 select. Keep, keep making selections, clear. Uh, this one, we have to do pretty much the same thing we did with the table. Um, so we'll do another onclick function, and we'll just call it export selection. And honestly, this probably won't be too hard. This same kind of idea that we're doing here, and we already have the download function written, so. Uh, this actually should be pretty easy. Export selection. Don't really need anything. Um, let's see var selections. Because what we're going to do is we're going to make an array and then join it into a string. Uh, so yeah, var selections. And well, of course we have that our good old friend var export text equal to that. And then we're going to have uh, td dot selected. Pretty much this. And what we'll do here is we'll do uh, selection dot push el dot text there we go and then we'll just do export text is equal to da da selections no selection is it a selection selection okay selections because it's plural join and we're gonna join it on with commas uh, and then we're just gonna call our good old friend uh, download export we're gonna pass it in our export text and we're gonna give this file name of uh, selections export dot txt and this will create that a uh, that anchor element again and just you know do that so uh, first thing is first load in the table create a random selection create another one create another one create another one blah 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 export selection and nothing happened what did we do wrong selection is not defined here we go I got confused uh, selections there we go all right roll back import find some random selection who are we gonna do who are we gonna do we're gonna stop here export selection and look at that that's our selection neat oh frito um are we done we're done uh there are some things that can obviously be improved upon um let's just delete this uh, but you know what uh, I think we're pretty we're pretty good all right um I don't even know where to okay I guess next let's do the s3 on to s3 so this works uh, on a local uh, just you know running it oh hey uh, I am actually working on this uh, it basically this guy or girl who knows uh, wants to create this pretty much he wants to be able to make a table 
that can be you know five by five or you know uh, ten by ten. Uh, he just wants to be able to type in these columns, or whatever, and whatever he types in here, he wants to be able to save anything that was old and saved. He wants to be able to import and automatically get populated. This wasn't. This got. I just populated this with an export from earlier when I was testing, and then he wants to be able to make one random selection per row because uh, he actually did this by rolling a dice manually, which is you know kind of crazy. Um, he wants to be able to just randomly select them, and then he wants to be able to export that selection, which uh, we're just working with text files. But what I'm about to do now is I'm about to make this a really simple web tool, and I'm about to put this on AWS, which uh, I have, and this probably won't cost me really any money to do. But let's see. We're going to create we're going to go to S3, because that's where we're going to host this. And this will actually be a good test to see if this even works. So uh, we're going to call this bucket uh, Dice Roller. And uh, this can have the same options as DM Analyzer. Just bucket name already exists. I definitely don't have a bucket called dice roller I don't know where I don't know where it's making that up I definitely don't have a bucket named that um let's call it something else then uh, dice randomizer give it the same permission as that okay there we go all right um, we're pretty much gonna go through just creating a regular bucket. We're going to go to Dice Randomizer. The bucket's obviously empty because we just created it. And we're going to open up this, take these two files, actually, and okay, we can drag and drop. So we're just going to add these two files. We're going to upload them. We're going to go to Permissions, which I don't think for bucket policy we need to change anything. We're going to see what happens. Uh, static website hosting. Amazon offers this for free. And since this doesn't have a back end, uh, we don't even need to set up like a database or anything like that. Just use this bucket to host a website. The uh, root document is index.html. We're not going to be doing any w website redirection. Just click save. And then this address, shall, I got to change the freaking bucket policy. Let's just take this from somewhere else that I know, I know, it, I know it's valid. Um, so what we're going to do is basically... Add, we're adding a rule to this bucket that just allows everyone to be able to read every item in the bucket. And we know this thing is called uh, Dice Randomizer. Yeah, Dice Randomizer. And yeah, it's going to warn you that you gave public access to the bucket. There's nothing secretive inside of this S3 file. Uh, in fact, actually, it's going to be posted on GitHub. So it's really, really no secret at all. Um, Okay, cool. So we are actually on a website right now. Let's see if we can read a file. So we can read a file. Can we export? Oh my god, export works. Holy hell. Okay, so it is so Chrome just blocked PDFs because what we do is we actually use a thing called a URI string if uh, you had been watching earlier and what that does is basically uh, allows you to base 64 in code an entire file and stream it to your browser to download it. And it's kind of a hacky way of doing things, but it is a really reliable way, or at least it used to be for PDFs to show PDFs that you could generate uh, until Chrome decided to block that because it was a security issue. So we'll make a random selection, da, 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 export the selection. Cool. There's our selection. Neat. We can clear it, export. Everything works. It's amazing. Okay. Well, uh, should probably fill this in, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. That is the entire project. And uh, at what time? What kind of time are we at right now? Yeah, hour 19. Yeah. So uh, it took a little bit of time, I guess. But I mean, for this guy, it probably will save him so much more because he was manually rolling dice. So I'm going to go ahead and respond to this guy, link him to the S3 website that we all just created. And uh, yeah, 
consider this one closed. So thank you for watching. I appreciate that. Very supportive people out there. And uh, until next time, all right? And, and next time will be when Reddit gives me another good request. So thank you, and uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully.